It has become an epidemic. Nearly 30,000 people die every year in this country from opioid overdoses, half of those from prescription medication. And there is one proven treatment that could help thousands stay clean and stay alive, but many people don't even know about it because some in the addiction community just don't believe in it. Here's Tom Lydon of the Fox 9 Investigators. But the reminders of Casey are everywhere. Are everywhere. Right? Everywhere. Yeah. The opioid epidemic has reached every corner of Minnesota, making its way down this gravel road to Shelly Elkington's farm just outside Montevideo and her daughter, Casey Jo. She cried and she said, it's not my fault, Mama. I'll never forget it. And I said, no, it's not. A champion swimmer in high school, Casey Jo was diagnosed with Crohn's disease her senior year. A doctor prescribing fentanyl patches for the pain. She was hooked before she knew it. She was afraid to be without her medications. It was her biggest fear, was not having them. So. Did that keep her from going to treatment? Yeah, she, she saw the alternative as being without them. And at the point that she was so addicted, being without them was not, an, not anything she could fathom. Her mother had heard about something that could help Casey Joe off the pain meds and make the cravings go away, a drug called Suboxone. But when she called a local addiction treatment program, they wouldn't discuss it, objecting to the very idea of using one drug to get off another. He wouldn't not only not do Suboxone, they didn't believe in it. It wasn't a part of their treatment model, um, and they didn't think it was helpful. They didn't think Suboxone was helpful? No. If Suboxone sounds familiar, that's because it's the same drug a doctor was bringing to Prince the morning his body was discovered at Paisley Park. They were a day too late. As it would happen, so was Casey Joe. How close was she to going into the Suboxone program? She, she had an appointment the next day. If I die sober, I'm a success story to them, but that's not really success to me. Shane Linehan was a decorated Washington County Sheriff's deputy until a training accident left him hospitalized and addicted to pain meds. He went to Hazelden for 28 days. Walking out the door, he could not imagine day 29. I went out to my truck and called Dr. Willenbring from the parking lot. So rehab is what you do when you don't have a real treatment. We used to treat breast cancer with prayer too, but we don't do that anymore and we shouldn't be treating addiction with prayer anymore either. Dr. Mark Willenbring runs a small addiction clinic in St. Paul that provides Suboxone. The former director of the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse, Dr. Willenbring has become an outspoken critic of abstinence-based 12-step treatment programs. And we have this fallacy that by thinking or by our changing our behavior, we could somehow change, you know, basic brain neurobiology, and that's a fantasy. We all have opioid receptors in our brains. Like the runner's high, the body even makes naturally occurring opioids in the form of endorphins. But opioid painkillers like Oxycontin, Percocet, and fentanyl, and street drugs like heroin, flood the brain with a Niagara of opioids. Many addiction experts like Dr. Willenbring believe those external opioids shut down the body's own production. You can no more will your brain to produce more opioids then you can will your pancreas to produce more insulin. Methadone and Suboxone are also opioids and satisfy those same receptors without getting you high. And yet methadone is one of the most tightly regulated drugs in America. There are 15 methadone clinics in Minnesota serving some 6,000 patients who in many cases go every day to receive a dose of methadone in liquid form. In the wrong dose or the wrong hands, methadone itself can be deadly. Suboxone, also known as buprenorphine, has abuse potential as well. It can be prescribed by any doctor who takes an eight-hour course. Only 128 Minnesota doctors are authorized to prescribe Suboxone. Until recently, each doctor could have only 100 patients. The max is now 275. So I, I tried it, and it was like a light switch. Just immediately switched off the compulsion. There's only one proven effective treatment for ongoing opioid addiction, and that's maintenance treatment with either buprenorphine or with methadone. 
They're about equally effective. That's also the conclusion of the World Health Organization, the Institute of Medicine, and almost every other major organization, that the best treatment for opioid addiction is indefinite, possibly lifelong maintenance on methadone or suboxone. And there's the catch, indefinite or lifelong maintenance. No one says take your high blood pressure for medication for three months and once it's under control, you can stop. Dr. Gavin Bard is head of addiction medicine at HCMC and in full disclosure, a colleague of my husband's. He says multiple studies show about 80% of patients who complete abstinence-based treatment are using again within two years. And the data are very clear that results from multiple trials using this approach that the majority of patients return to opiate use. And with that, there's a fairly high uh, chance of death compared to people who receive medications to treat their opiate addiction. That's because someone coming out of treatment or even jail has lost their tolerance. What got them high before can now be fatal. It's why three years ago, Hazelden, the holy grail of 12-step abstinence, broke with tradition and finally began offering Suboxone. I really pushed it, yeah. You pushed Dr. It Mark Seppala is Hazelden's medical director, who became alarmed back in 2012 when six people overdosed and died after leaving Hazelden. He admits for some in the 12-step community, using Suboxone is heresy. It is to some extent an ideological battle within the addiction world, isn't it? It's primarily a 12-step oriented, abstinence-based group saying, you know, the 12-step program, spirituality is all people really need versus people on the other side saying this is a brain disease, let's just give them medication. And the truth is we've tried to take this middle ground and say let's do both, let's do all of that and more, let's do everything we can to help these people. There are people out there, I'm talking to the camera, right? There are people out there that say that opiate addicts' brains are so impaired and so damaged by their opiate addiction they can't survive without opiates. That is a lie. We've got a uh, psychologist over there. We passed Saul the Selby office. is clinical director of Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, one of the largest addiction programs in Minnesota, which offers a year-long residential program. Selby, who is not a doctor, says he has clients trying to kick methadone and suboxone, that they're addicted to what they thought was a cure. If there were treatment centers like Teen Challenge that could keep people in here for a year, you would see much better outcomes for uh, opiate addiction treatment. Problem is, few insurance policies will pay for a year of residential treatment. So recently, even Teen Challenge began accepting clients using Suboxone. But they're taking it for only a few weeks as a kind of detox or bridge to abstinence. Dr. Gavin Bart says such a short taper is still high risk for fatal relapse. And in those situations, during the first two weeks after stopping the medication, there's about a nine times higher chance of dying when then compared to the general population. Do you know how many people leave Minnesota Teen and Adult Challenge and do end up overdose and dying after they leave here? No, I don't. No idea. Well, you know, periodically you hear about it, but it's not many. You can go into rehab for opiates, stop cold turkey, come out, use, and die. And it happens every day. And yet many in the addiction world are still unwilling to concede much to science, believing an article of faith that you can't truly be in recovery if you're still on a drug. I can't think of anything better outcome for my daughter than being addicted to Suboxone, frankly. Do you believe she would be alive if she was given Suboxone? Yes, I do. I believe it would have given her a chance. Shelley Elkington has turned her daughter's death into a cause, working with Senator Amy Klobuchar to support a White House plan that would spend a billion dollars on the opioid epidemic, most of that money going to evidence-based treatment like Suboxone. That bill, though, is still sitting in Congress. We have much more on treatment options at the Fox 9 app. And if you know someone, have a relative who's struggling with opioid addiction, mm -hmm. please check out that website. Department of Health information is there. Also some from SAMHSA, which is a big addiction uh, agency, and uh, get help. You know, just like this mom, a parent would do anything to save a child's life. Absolutely. And I do want to point out, because there will be some people who say, gosh, Tom, you're awfully 
hard on the 12-step abstinence movement, even Dr. Willingbring believes that that is enormously effective for people who've gone through treatment and need a support system. Let's face it, 12-step programs have saved millions mm -hmm. of people in our country, but he believes in terms of treatment, what we're calling treatment, he believes for opioid addiction, you really have to talk about medically assisted treatment. It's a different story with the opioids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the number of overdoses, a lot of people paying attention to this issue. Absolutely, so, and they should be. Thanks, right. Tom. Thanks, Tom.